What's up YouTube, LND here. Uh, today we're going to be playing some Dead by Daylight. Kind of. Um, what we're going to be doing is going through some of the stuff. Because as you can see here, the new chapter dropped today. Um, Tuesday. And uh, I'm going to be leveling the character and stuff. Um, so what the deal is, is I actually kind of already did this. Um... I fucked up on my recording though, and I have to redo some sections of it. Um, mainly going through this stuff, the news, and like the new collection stuff and some of the bug fixes or whatever. And then um, I have to talk about the unique perks and her power and all that stuff. Um, so some of the stuff will be kind of spliced around in a weird way. Um, you will see you will see that I'm level 48 um, when I talk about her other stuff and then it'll cut to me leveling then it'll cut back to me after I'm done leveling now and I'll end the video that way um, so that out of the way we have the new content chapter 9 shattered bloodline what lies beneath um, the mundane can be terrifying under those layers of a quaint family life, violence festers. And when this dark, rampant force lashes out, lives are broken, families shattered. A vengeful spirit, hard bent on revenge, walking between this world and the next. A teacher prepared for this lesson and trapped in a seemingly familiar world turned nightmare. A family estate struck by tragedy. A place where walls keep hidden the festering violence lurking beneath the deceitful surface. The Shattered Bloodline chapter includes a new map, the family residence, new killer the spirit, new survivor survivor Adam Francis, and an exclusive item for the new survivor. Um, that exclusive item is Adam Francis's, I believe it's called, it's the graduation um, outfit, I don't know what the fuck, it, graduation something. It's really not that special. Um, I do believe you only get it if you actually pay money for it. Um, I didn't have shards and I want the exclusive even if they are really bad. So I'll probably, I, I did just pay for it. I probably will just pay for the DLCs. But otherwise you really don't have an excuse to pay for the DLCs unless you really, really are butthurt about exclusive items and not having them like I am. Um... Shattered Bloodline New Collection Chapter 9 brings forth a fresh wave of content to adorn your killers and survivors. We'll take a look at some of the new stuff that came in. Inspired by the Yoma, Yamaoka estate, we are releasing our thematic collection Grim Matsuri, which rep, er, presents five new outfits. Claudette's Open Day Student, Meg's Sporty Beauty Queen, Nia's Harajuki Graffiti Artist, Jake's Solon Ronin, and the Huntress's Bird of Prey, Sugata. Shattered Bloodline also displays outfits for its new killer and survivor. Wreak vengeance with the spirit who introduces a very rare Onroru collection, uncommon surging rage collection, and common apparition collection. Or start the entity's trial with Adam Francis who offers a very rare urban street wearer collection, uncommon fall semester collection, and common essentials collection. Last but not least, we are showcasing two new outfits for eight of the killers, namely the hillbilly trapper, wraith, doctor, nurse, huntress, clown, and hag. Um, the only one out of those, the other killers that have anything that's worthwhile is the huntress, which is the one that they mentioned above, the huntress's bird of prey, Sugata. Um... The head for the bird one is not that good, but we'll take a look at that later. Um, I'm not going to read all of this stuff because as you can see, the bug fixes and other things is fucking hilariously long. Like this is, the amount of stuff that is here is absolutely ridiculous. I'm just going to read through like some of the balanced stuff or like the features content. Content added new option for player reporting and tally exploit don't care. Added new menu and lobby music. Added new status effect for survivor. Broken. Survivors afflicted with the broken status effect may not be healed past the injured health state for the duration. 
Similar to th the no mither effect, the status is shown to the other players on screen portraits in the HUD. The broken status effect is applied to survivors when they successfully lose use deliverance to unhook themselves. Feature added a new score event, Safe Hook Rescue. The scoring event triggers after a survivor has been unhooked and not downed for 10 seconds. The survivor that performed the hook rescue gains the points. The score event helps clarify if slash when a killer hook rescue has occurred for the purpose of Emblem Benevolent and the new perk Deliverance. Feature added a direct link to the customer. I don't give a shit about that. Integrated. I don't give a shit about that either. Um, so balance thing. Killers with the 4.4 meter per second movement speed, the Hag and Huntress, now launch at the same speed as other killers. Adjusted and shortened all killer interrupt animations. Interesting. Inter okay, so they made like grabbing people out of lockers and windows and off gens and stuff faster, I guess. Um, the, the movement speed lunch stuff, I'm very happy to see that. Knowing that it was a bug for so long was kind of bullshit. It does mention here only the Hag and Huntress, but supposedly um, the spirits lunge was also fucked. So supposedly that's fixed now too. So hopefully it won't suck ass trying to hit people with her. Score event changes. Uh... Generators complete have been reduced from 1500 to 1000. I don't know why they were doing this to survivors. Um, unhooking survivor is reduced from 1875 to 1500. Uh, safe hook rescue for survivors that performed the action is 500. Edit a score event for healing yourself or others with an insta heal medkit add ons. Okay. What? I don't know why. Why would you give people points for that? Like, that's not. Like, I know it doesn't take much to sit there and hold M1 to heal somebody, but instant, I don't know if insta-healing should... Whatever, I don't know, that's petty shit, I guess. Uh, unhook changes. The unhook animation can be cancelled if the survivor moves away before completing the charge interaction. So, you can... I don't understand what the fuck that's supposed to mean. The animation for freeing oneself from the hook has been reduced to... From 2.4 to 1.2 seconds. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I think the next one is what matters the most. Players who are being unhooked or are freeing themselves from the hook will not take damage from the killer attacks if they are hit before they regain control of their character. I don't quite understand the drop in speed, but that part right there is what matters the most. That stops survivors from farming people which is a problem that needed to be addressed pallet changes addressed the adjusted the animation for a survivor throwing down a pallet while stationary the pallet will be dropped more quickly interesting map changes that's a lot of map stuff i don't really care about bloodlust uh these dropped one state i guess so i think bloodlust one was Point four, or is it point two? Uh, either way, Bloodlust two and three are now what came before it. Bloodlust three is four, and I don't know, some it, I don't know what that is all about, honestly. Emblem changes don't really care. Trapper changes. Trapper buffering has been reintroduced. A trap buffering reintroduced. I don't know what that is. A bear trap that is being disarmed will not trap survivors who run over it. Okay then. Disarm bear trap time increased from 2.5 to 3.5. So I don't really think that needed to happen. Just saying. If we're going to be an asshole and say something about uh, the, how real something is. In all reality, a person could fucking drop a rock on the trap and immediately disarm it. It doesn't take a thousand seconds to... Like, why do you slowly disarm the trap like that? Wraith changes, movement speed while uncloaking has been adjusted. Uncloak exit animation, which lasts three seconds after finishing uncloaking, can now be canceled by attacking or interacting with objects, okay? Or you can just not finish cloaking. After successfully un wait. The uncloak exit animation, which lasts three seconds after finishing uncloaking, can now be canceled by... I don't understand that. After successfully uncloaking, the rate gains a 
burst of speed for one second, similar to the effect of the windstorm add-ons. The add-ons have been redesigned. I think this is kind of dumb. Time required to burn the Wraith out of cloak with the flashlight increased from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. I personally think you shouldn't be able to blind or burn the Wraith to begin with. The blind warrior add-ons, which previously granted further light burn protection, have been redesigned. Uh, revisited all the race add-ons. I'm not going to read through all that. Nurse changes. Uh, interrupt animation, whatever. Okay. So, yeah. There are some of the changes from PTB2. Um, okay, so this is some other stuff I want to read. The balance. Perked. Autodidact. Tokens now provide plus 15% healing. Reduced from 20 now has a starting value of minus 25. Spirit reduced the terror radius to 24 meters down from 32. Uh, sound made while using her power has been reduced in volume. Survivors will not hear the spirit sound when the user when she uses her power when they are within 8 meters from the husk. Remove the visibility of blood from injured survivors. I don't agree with that. Slightly increase the duration of the passive phase effect. I don't know what the fuck that means. Fix the lunge distance so it is consistent with other regular speed killers. Also fix Huntress and have, okay. That's, uh, okay. That's, so that's it for the news and stuff. That took fucking longer than I expected it to. So let's actually get into the killer. Um, as I said before, at this point I have already leveled her up, but I'll go through some of the stuff. Um, we'll read her, uh, thing and the killer thing here. Uh, spirit, difficulty, hard. A phase walking killer able to catch survivors off guard with her traversal power Yamaoka's haunting. Her power allows her to teleport from one place to another without being seen. Her personal perks Spirit Fury, Hex, Haunted Ground, and Rancor give her tools to observe and bait survivors and deal with obstacles directly in her path. It's pretty good. Uh, look, look at her, her um... Um... Uh, perks or her perks uh something before i forget i don't think i mentioned at any point in the leveling part is the like constant sounds and sighs she's making actually was not in the ptb um i don't know if i really like that stuff uh, it'll probably grow on me at some point or whatever but i do prefer it when she was just like just that low pitch or high pitch like sighing in the background if you can really hear it okay so first perk here um i would read her backstory but it's so long you can look it up on the wiki and stuff if you really want to read it it's a it's a really interesting backstory because it's far more grotesque and detailed than i think it really needs to be it's just i don't know it's not a bad thing necessarily it's just interesting First perk, Spirit Fury. Each pallet you break magnifies the wrath of the entity. After breaking four pallets, the next time you are stunned by a pallet, the entity will instantly break the pallet. You still suffer from the stun effect. I believe at tier 3 that drops to two pallets. Next perk is Hex Haunted Ground. Two trapped Hex Totems will spawn in the trial. When one of the two trapped Hex Totem is cleansed by a survivor, all survivors suffer from the exposed status effect for 40 seconds. The remaining trapped hex totem immediately becomes a doll totem. So, I think this is kind of based off the idea of like an old thing that would go around back in the day called Hex Fool's Gold. Um, and what it, what it would do is it would place a totem... And then it would, if a, a survivor broke it, what it would do is it actually would remove the survivor's perk. It's kind of what this is doing. Instead, it's trapping two totems, making people possibly thinking it's like ruin or something. Or like, um, I was going to say Rancor, but Rancor is not a hex. Something like ruin or whatever um, that gives you an insta down. Alright guys, sorry for that like extremely abrupt cut there. Um, I'll try to do my best to make sure it's not like in the middle of me saying something, but Steam decided to fuck itself and, uh, crashed or something. I don't fucking know what happened. I had to end it with Task Manager to get it to fully respond, even though it was still responding somewhat. 
Um, so what I was saying with uh, this game or this perk is that I don't particularly find the exposed status thing useful. I don't care for that stuff in the game to begin with. Um, but running this with like Hex Ruin is really good because having three totems or three Hex totems using only two perks I think is like really good. I wish there were more ways to light more of the totems uh, than just haunted ground. I wish maybe maybe every every uh, hex perk lit two or something. I don't know. Hexes definitely need to be changed to make them a little bit better. And uh, her final perk here, Rancor, which I love the name and idea of this perk, but I don't like that it's in the game. You become obsessed with one survivor. Each time a generator is complete, the obsession sees your aura for 5 seconds. Each time a generator is completed, all survivor's locations are revealed to you for 3 seconds. Once all generators are complete, the obsession has the exposed status effect and the killer can kill the obsession. Um, I personally think that the exposed status should be removed and you should just get kill um you should just be able to kill them because i don't know i she already has an insta down perk i don't really think two is like that necessary but it is kind of whatever do for the most part think every single one of her perks are at least decent um unlike with um adam francis his perks are just i don't know Maybe deliverance, I guess. So we'll go ahead and uh, now that we're done with that, finally we'll go ahead and read the the power here. Yamaoka is haunting. The spirit can use her power, Yamaoka is haunting, to enter an ethereal plane and reappear at a new location. Tap and hold the power button to charge the spirit. To charge, the spirit will depart her physical body, leaving behind a stationary husk. While Yomaoka's haunting is active, the spirit may traverse freely to a new location, moving at a faster rate for a short duration. She is still confined to movement within the physical environments and surrounding. The spirit leaves the physical plane losing sight of all survivors. She can, however, still sense the scratch marks they leave in the environment. The spirit will, produ will produce an audible cue at her current location. Once the power has ended, the spirit retains her speed boost for a brief period and her husk fades away. Using Yamaoka's haunting depletes the spirit's power bar. The power bar will automatically replenish over time. The power must be fully replenished before it can be triggered again. Um, the power bar thing, uh, it's kind of like Michael's or the shapes uh, Evil Within where it's a square box that goes around from you know, like the middle uh, to the right and like in a square. Um, it charges the same way. Uh, you can only use it when it's fully charged as it says and stuff. So it's honestly not the best. Uh, honestly not the best power. I don't personally feel that the spirit is that strong. I do think that it, she will kind of be like a second nurse. When people really learn how to play her, they're going to be really, really fucking good at her. But there's not going to be that many people who are going to be like top tier with her. Okay, so I think that stuff is all finally done. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and push it over to um, the leveling part of it. And then I'll come back to this when I'm done leveling. So I see you guys in a bit. Okay, let's start the leveling. Level 1. What do you got here? Dying light there. Uh, Quan Talisman. Moderately increases Yamaoka's haunting duration. Uh, Gifted Bamboo Comb. Slightly decreases Yamaoka's haunting activation charge time. Stacks. So some of these, I'm assuming, aren't going to be stackable. Some of them like probably better ones. Uh, we got here origami crane slightly increases yamaoka's haunting power recovery speed stack so to be able to use the power slightly more often uh, zori slightly increases yamaoka's haunting movement speed stacks 
Um, that's interesting. The speed boost ones are probably going to be pretty decent. Uh, Cosmore Tarzman increases haunting duration stacks. Mystery box. Nothing special there. More another band name column. What's this? Juniper Bonsai slightly increases the frequency of passive phasing stacks. I have no idea what the fuck passive phasing is. I have no idea what the fuck that's supposed to mean. Really don't. White Hair Ribbon moderately decreases Yamaoka's haunting activation charge time stacks. So her ability to use it or using her ability is faster. Uh, Shawasi Amulet slightly increases Yamaoka's haunting duration stacks. I'm curious if there's any of these add-ons that actually don't stack. Maybe her ultra rare? No, because... Maybe. I can't remember what her ultra rare has done. It's been fucking forever since I uh, looked at them. We got perk slot 2 there. Um, nothing new here. Sloppy Butcher. I'm gonna say I have to grab everything. See if I get something good from this box. I got a bonsai tree. That's all I guess. Um, again, nothing new. The spies. Yeah. Got a bloody streamer there. Again, nothing new. Uh, it's the nano there, I think. Sorry, yeah, I already got that. That's the nanophobia. Bloody party streamer. Nah, I already. Yeah, I got this one too. I'm gonna forget what these do until I get them for the 5,000th time. Yeah, I got a couple new things here. Ren's Broken Watch. Moderately increases Yamaoka's haunting power recovery speed. Okay, so it charges faster. Well, not charge the... I don't know how to explain it. It does stuff faster, basically. Dirty Wurabalki. Considerably increases Yamaoka's haunting movement speed. I remember me something special with that perk. Oh, I've got another new thing here. And barbecue and chili, that's pretty nice. Rusty flute. Considerably increases Yamaoka's haunting power recovery speed. Okay, so we just got the green and yellow version of that. Oh, we got another one. Buddy Sports Day Cap. Moderately increases Yamaoka's haunting movement speed. Stacks, okay. Still haven't seen any that say don't stack. I don't know if we're gonna those even exist. Level 10, third perk slot. I got a couple more new things. Shawasi Amulet, we already got that. Uh, bloody hair brooch. Considerably increases uh, decreases Yamaoka's haunting. I need to grab a knockout, I guess. Distressing. I wonder if I should have grabbed distressing there. Um Current Talisman, uh, did we already get that? Moderately increases haunting duration. I think we might have already got that. I'm gonna grab that for some reason. Fucking blood web. Let's see. Uh, brutal strength. Nothing new here. Okay, we got Dried Cherry Blossom. Slightly increases passive phasing duration. Slightly increases the frequency of passing phasing. I still don't know what the fuck passing phases is. Like, I, I don't think I've seen it. I didn't play enough on the PTB to know for sure. I wanted to make sure I got both of the things there. Play with the food's not really that good, though. Wow, to me. Uh, nothing new here. Bloody Party Stream is not bad. Four. See, so you got a couple new add-ons here, I think. One, maybe. Check it out in a second. See, you got anything from the box? Nah, not really. I'm gonna grab uh, Spear Fury here. Katana Suba. Uh, slightly increases Yamaoka's haunting reappearance duration. Increases reappearance movement speed. Okay, so you re reappear faster and give you speed boost. Like, so I kind of like... Um, race old spirit fury things, I guess. Or wind fury, I can't remember what they're called. 
They're being changed. Eh, nothing new here. Same thing we just got. Blood Warden. Probably won't ever use that. I pulled Blood Warden off one time. I played Freddy quite a bit, actually. Uh, another Blood Web with nothing new here. I guess I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I'll be cutting out any blood webs I go through that I don't really have anything. We got a Mori there. Nothing else on this blood web. Mori and pick your choice. Okay, level 20. See if we get anything good here. Uh, unfortunately, not really. The perks we got aren't very good. What is that? Hex the Third Seal and Unnerving Presence. Those look so similar perk wise. Nothing really new here. Grab a nerve presence. I don't really use either one of them much though. I'm gonna let the entity start taking more expensive things at this point. Okay, we got Rancor 2 here. Wanted to show this off. Um yeah, aura for four seconds. I still can't believe they made a perk like that. Um, Got bloody party streamer down there too, that's not bad. Give us more points to level her up. Oh yeah, got ultra rare, father's glasses. A uh, pair of dad's glasses that belong to an overworked salaryman. Survivor blood trails are visible. Okay, that's, those ultra rare add-ons are not the best. And I fucking, I fucked up. Oh uh, shit. I should have grabbed Spirit Fury there. Didn't notice that it was the two or three of that. Okay, level 28. Got a new add on. Moderately increases Yomaka's haunting duration, uh, movement speed, and haunting power recovery. So that's pretty good. Increases. Recovery, speed, and duration. That's actually not that bad. Um, we got here territory imperative. Fuck! God damn it, I did it again. I need to get that fucking tier three. I wanted her the best thing for each of her perks. So we've got another one of those amulets. Yakawa Yoke amulet. Yaku Yoke? I don't fucking know how to say that. Level 30 here, so we're gonna start getting our teachables. Okay, we got Spirit Fury. Uh, screenshot that. Because I'm a weirdo. Kutsumari Talisman. Increases considerably. I think I got that already. I can't remember. We got the teachable. Passed on Insidious. I'll fucking never use that book anyway. Try to. I'm gonna try to start being a little bit more picky with the items that I grab off each web so I can start saving points. Oh, we got the other ultra rare, Mother Daughter Ring. Tremendously increases Yamaoka's haunting movement speed. Scratch marks are no longer visible while Yamaoka's haunting. That is so dumb. It's already hard enough, I think, to find the survivors and stuff without the, or with the scratch marks. I don't think removing them is really that good. We'll grab it though. Grab this Mori. Remember to grab that pudding, do that before it gets eaten. There we go. That was not bad at all. Do it here. Uh, dried cherry blossom. I believe I already got that. Prayer beads. I didn't. Bodily decreases the range of the sound emission radius while using Yamaoka's haunting. Okay. Uh, I guess that's alright. Fuck, I hope it doesn't. I'm not gonna get hurt. God damn it. Fucking entity bastard. I uh, got another mother mother daughter ring. That's not bad. Oh, here we go. Yamaoka's family crest. That's the map offering. Tremendously increased the chance to be sent to the Yamaoka estate when burnt. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I'll grab this ultra rare offering. Where is the other perk? Distressing. So grab that ultra rare. I'll take Stridor. Or is that Whispers? Stridor is a nurse perk. I don't think I have that. Got an Ebony Mori there. That's not bad. I don't really like using Moris that much though. Okay, that 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 one is Stridor, I believe. Yeah. Got 
35s. Another teachable. Oh, we got another ultra rare offering. That's not bad. Hex Haunted Crown. Okay. Grab that. I actually almost wanted to grab Knockout there for a second. I was thinking. Is it in box? Anything good? Nah, not really. I would have preferred an add on, at the very least. More bloody streamers and another pudding. That's not bad at all. Knockout tear two there. Got the pod there too. That's not good. Bad there. Oh, that was a good. I wasn't even paying attention there. Love it when he eats half the web like that. Uh, Franklin's demise. I don't really care about that. Probably grab. Thanos. I don't know which one I'm gonna grab. Okay, sorry for the cut there. I just realized I was running out of uh, points there, which I just did. Fuck. Um, yeah, I'm going to let the entity grab that whole side of the web, by the way. I'm not going to grab either perk. I'm going to go ahead and go to the store. Go to the shrine here. Where is the shrine? We're going to buy Urban Evasion. 150,000, yeah. Play with your food, yep. And, yep. Okay, so we got another 450,000 points there to spend on her. Okay, sorry, got fucking distracted there. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's so fucking juicy. Fuck those two perks in there. I don't care about them. Anything new here? Not really. Another pudding. Grab Remember Me, I guess. Pudding. I might, at this point, have already gotten all of her add-ons. Not 100% sure, honestly. Uh, white hair ribbon. Please do activation time. Um... I, got, I was, couldn't decide if I wanted the Mori or that. I got both anyway. Uh, what guys on? So Saya, Modernity. I, I think I got this already. I actually don't remember if I read this. No, I actually I didn't. Yamaoka's Haunting Reappearance Duration Movement Speed. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't think what the fuck I got. Just go ahead and get ready to grab that. Lullaby. Fuck the Stalker. Just start obviously taking the uh, cheaper items and blood offerings if I get it. Hopefully I get both of these. And of course not. Because it's me. Level 40 here. Rancor. Another fucking pair of the uh, glasses there. Five seconds. Okay, that's not bad I guess. Alright, that's the default one. Why was I thinking that was Rancor 3? Go ahead and grab that and the uh, offer for the ultra rare add on. Almost fucked myself over there. Alright, I think we grab another one of those. Okay, level 44 here. Haven't been getting anything new. Oh, fucking barbecue and chili 3? Yes, please. I want to get them blood points. Let's see. Uh, crest. You know what? Probably. Gonna... Yeah, I think we should grab that, yeah. Alright, level 45. Nothing special happens. Here. Another fucking ultra rare. Ah, holy shit. I feel like I get a bit too many of those things almost. Yeah, we're gonna be a couple levels off, unfortunately. I was really hoping to get 250. Uh. Fortunately, we're going to be stuck at 48 here, but it's not going to take much. I'm going to go for a territorial imperative. Okay. Let's see, where are your unique perks? Where's the other one? Um, yeah, okay, there you go. I'm going to slap on a streamer. I'm setting up a fucking screenshot here for myself, guys. There you follow the says, there we go. Whoops. Yeah, good shit. Alright guys, um, that's probably going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I really do like making these leveling um, videos, especially when I get so damn close to level 50 like I did. 
Um, can't wait to actually get in and play and get onto the map and stuff for you guys. Uh, so yeah, with that, I think that ends this video. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next one. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to be notified when my new content is released, click the subscribe button on screen. And if you're looking for more videos to watch, click on the links to the right to be taken to either playlist there, or click the link on the left to be